Welcome to The Bassacre with Matt Steffen and Chris Grove. Welcome to your high-tech source for everything bass fishing related. We are back on another season. We're here at Lake Okeechobee. Last year we did a couple of breakdowns. This year we're starting something new called The Bassacre, Chris. It's going to be interesting. This is uh, part one. Uh, as you can tell, it's... Uh, very, very uh, organic, <laughs> organic, I'd say, I tech, whatever you want to say, but we're bringing it to you live here at uh, the pond behind our house. We, we felt like it would be something good where we kind of broke down the behind the scenes of the fishing world at each tournament. So we don't know what the topic's going to be. Sometimes it might be us filming a, a tire change if we break down on the side of the road. Maybe it'll be a scandal that we hear at tournament registration, you never know. Or scandal, someone getting arrested right now. So. Well, o Okeechobee's got a few, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of few people behind bars in yeah. good old Florida. There's a lot so. of bars on the windows around Lake Okeechobee. 100%, One, fences too for the gators. But, but that's because there's a lot of bass fishing tackle in all these houses and it's <laughs> it's a value around here. So what do you think, uh, what do you think about this season before we even get into Okeechobee? How are you feeling? I'm always excited to start fishing. I mean, it, it's it's you know it's that time of year. It's cold back home. Uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, this is the MLF Tackle Warehouse Invitationals. Uh, it takes about a minute to talk and tell you what it's all about. But uh, I'm excited to get things started, and no better place to do it than Florida. You know? Yeah, it really is. It really is one of the best places to start the season, in my opinion. But this. This week practice has been kind of all over the place. We had a, the first day we had like 50 mile an hour winds. Day two, it rained pretty much the whole time. Both days were cool. And then finally we had a relatively decent day, but the wind is gonna blow. I don't know if, if you can hear it in the audio on this, but the uh, wind is definitely still blowing. It's supposed to blow throughout the tournament. And it's supposed to blow an awesome east majority of the yeah. derby. Yeah. What's the saying? wind from the east the fish bite the least yeah i think it's been that way all week but uh it, it can't get any worse like i said uh when you're when it's 50 something degrees in the morning you know it's warm for us guys up north but in florida that is considered a cold front so uh we're on somewhat of a warming trend but we got to face the east wind and uh got to face 150 other anglers yeah so what what was the uh the highlight of practice for you oh missing day one of practice Oh, you broke down again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it happens. Uh, it's not Phoenix's fault. It's not Mercury's fault. Uh, I had to borrow a boat. It's kind of in a pinch. And uh, I don't know. I just had some uh, bad cards dealt and uh, became a Merc tech majority of the day. And I didn't get on the water until about 3.30. But uh, I didn't miss much. It was it was, it was was howling out there. But made the best of the last two days. Yeah. I think I, think I took a chunk of my skeg out when I hit an alligator. Yeah, you did. You did. I know. You did a good job too. And you had about fifty yards of line. And you I know. Prop too. Yeah, I, yeah. I had a. I picked up prop, but I actually my day three of practice, I, I thought I might get stranded at one point because I, I was back in a rat trail and I was pushing my way through hyacinth and just completely clocked the propeller up <laughs> in hyacinth roots and all that. It took me a long time to get that out. You need to make one of those little brushes you can put on your uh, push bowl and make those. Really? Yeah, yeah, especially with you. You got Yamaha, you got that pickup to get in there and clean her off. Well, it wasn't the pickup, it was in the prop. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. I could have used you. You would have jumped in the water and cleaned it off. Not right? here. I'm scared. This is one place I do not want to fall in. There are gators, and he literally did hit a gator, and it took a good sized chunk out of the yeah. back. So. so so, let's talk uh, predictions. What is, what is your prediction for me this week for and you? I'll yeah and I'll predict yours oh gosh uh, I'm gonna give an overall prediction before I start you I, I definitely think you're gonna need 12 13 pounds to move forward and fish the, to the third top day 50. yeah to get the top 50 but my predict prediction for you is I feel like you're gonna have a cool 16 and a half 17 pounds a day oh, yes yeah yeah you're gonna catch a big one yeah. every day I uh I I think you've got better potential than I've got. No oh, gosh. I, I mean I I got a fairy one. I was gonna hand. I was gonna say sixteen for you for day one. I'm I will be I'll be tickled with fifteen. I mean I I, I really do feel like twelve pounds is the goal mark. There there is a 
Even though we're at Lake Okeechobee. It's just not fishing the same. You, you can't not. even catch little ones, right? We now. got high water. They're, 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 they're hiding everywhere. Um, you know, there are waves of spawners, but you're getting a lot of posters. And it's we muddy. all, you know, you're muddy. And you already know post spawn fish are difficult to catch. And if they can hide, I mean, it, it, it's a perfect example. It's like bobbing for apples in a five-gallon bucket or bobbing for apples in a pool. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Yeah. But there are 475 tag bass in there, <laughs> the guy said. Worth 100 bucks a pop. So I am fishing for one of those because they said the average the average weight of those tag bass is four pounds. Yeah, there you go. So I'll, I'll take, take one. one. I'll take one. What's, uh, what's the weapon of choice? Well, this being part one, like I said, it's a little scratchy. What we're doing here is kind of giving weapons of choice. These aren't going to be what we're rolling with all day, but I think I'm going to put 50% of my weight um, on this. I'm going to be top water fishing a lot, so I do need a follow up bait, and they also are some spawning fish. And we all know that a Berkeley General is it power bait or max scent? This is a max scent. That's all I throw. I don't even throw the regular one anymore. There's in no my, point. This one purple. smells so good. I love that color. Dude, the best about the purple is, folks, if you can make it through it, fish, couple fish eats it, it like turns to this glowing bait. Yeah. Um, but what we do is we're gonna break things down. Um, I got four rot, uh, EWG fusion hook all day long. Uh, I got a little stopper on there. That is not a weight. A uh, bunch of companies make them. Uh, Bruiser Baits makes them, which is uh, Bass Attic Tackle. Halo makes them. You can take a caulk tube and put a stopper on there. I like this to slide through the vegetation not get hung up when I'm around a couple little sticks and toolies and stuff like that. But that's my weightless way. Uh, I was going to go wacky, but I feel like I'd break it off in the first five minutes. Uh, the setup here is simple. There is no need to have another weightless Sanko rod. This is made and, and tested by the Messiah. This is the new Abu Garcia Pro Series and none other, none other than Johnny Cox, who's made a million dollars on a weightless worm especially the general so this rod's been in the making for two years it is a seven foot medium heavy fast but it just has a lot more tip than usual uh he, he does not lose fish with this rod and he, i mean he is the messiah of the general so that's definitely what i'm going with here i got 15 pound uh x9 braid synthetic braid and we are in Florida in case I catch a big one. FG knot to a 12 pound, 100% fluorocarbon leader. And uh, got this Pro Series rod to, teamed up with the new Revo Rocket. Look at that bad boy, boys and girls. This is evil right here. I love throwing a rocket, pickup line and wind. This combo is definitely gonna put a couple in the box and uh, hopefully puts a big one in there that maybe misses the bait he's going with. It's a weapon of bass destruction, as they like to say. Bassica! That's exactly it. Yeah, Ooh. I'm uh, I'm gonna be working the topwater game quite a bit. I've got the Berkeley Spin Rocket. Little backstory to this: couple of, I don't know if it was the last time I was at Okeechobee or two times ago. I got a random text from fellow pro Justin Lucas, who said, who said, Matt. Do you have any of the Berkeley Spin Rockets in MF Bluegill? That's the color. Uh, and at the time I had other Spin Rockets, but not this color. And he said he'd take a pass on it. But the key here is anytime somebody like Justin Lucas reach out, reaches out to you, the night before a tournament asking for a specific bait, you might want to take note of that. So ever since then, I got myself some of these and I've been using it all over the country to catch fish. And I've had some really big bites in practice on that. Uh, I bend my hooks in so I can't catch the fish, but I'm really hoping it can generate a few big strikes. Uh, for me, I'm throwing this on an MHX blank. It's a custom rod blank that I build. It's the MB843. So it's a seven foot, three power, nice, you know, good casting rod, but still has a little bit of backbone and the soft tip not to pull the hooks out anytime you're fighting a fish. And I'm throwing this on 14 pound Berkeley uh, Trilene XL monofilament. I like straight mono. I don't have any braid, don't have anything else, just straight mono, which I like because it gives me some stretch, allows me to keep pressure on the fish without pulling the hooks out. And then I've got a pair, paired up with an Abby Garcia uh, MGX yep. reel, which is one of my favorite reels. 
And uh, overall, it's just a really good setup. And I think it's gonna put some fish in the boat for me. Yeah. Tell, think, them, tell them the coolest thing about the, I mean, all Berkeley baits, but the spin rocket about the hooks. I mean, this is how it comes out of the packet. Yeah, these are the Fusion 19 hooks, extremely sticky, as you can see, they're just grabbing onto me and won't let go. They're almost a pain to have. Yeah, like, I'll take it all day They're They're one of those things, Honestly, I don't think people have recognized how no, good the Fusion I hope 19 they don't. hooks are. Because <laughs> they, they are don't. they are lightning sharp. But yeah. overall, it's a really good topwater setup that I am looking to do a little massacre on. I say here, and then, you know, after we close this out, we have a little massacre ourselves. In the oh, you want to have a one-on-one -on -one out here? One-on-one -on -one against you, you know what I mean? I think that sounds take, good. Take you out. Let's General versus Spin Rocket. You, that you got a weapon, I got a weapon. We're going to go have a little one-on-one -on -one massacre to ourselves. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this. We're going to do a massacre episode every tournament of the year. Yeah, and, and we're going to throw some in when things pop up. I, yeah. I mean... Random massacre. So, I mean, this is massacre number one. Hopefully there will be massacre number two on day three. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Well, maybe we'll have an after day one episode to Ooh. hear about your fast destruction ooh, ooh. but uh you guys rock thanks for tuning in go check out chris's channel chris grow fishing if you haven't subscribed to him subscribe to him if you haven't subscribed to my channel matt seven fishing it would be very much appreciated guys thanks for watching chain rats